There we go. How about that? Sorry about that. That was a bit of a technical issue there. Hopefully you guys can see me okay. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in a different spot today. Uh, hopefully the Wi-Fi signal won't kill me. I usually like to be Ethernet wired. There's no Ethernet in this room. That's because I'm not in my house. I'm in my garage. So um, it's nice out. So uh, I have the garage door open. I can see the sun blinding me as it sets here in the East Coast. And yeah, I foolishly made the um, notion that, uh, thought rather, that uh, hey, if I start and manage a live stream on YouTube uh, when I'm on my desktop, I should just be able to use the phone app and just go to the live button and then pick up where I left off. Well, no, that's, <laughs> that's apparently not how it works, or if it does work that way, I was not smart enough, uh, smart enough to, to figure that out. So, um, I had to bring my laptop here into the garage, which I was not planning. I was just going to stream off my phone here. I had it plugged in, uh, had the little tripod thing, and uh, yeah, that's not, that was not happening. So, we're here. Uh, I'm streaming from my MacBook. I guess that makes it a little easier to, uh, to um, respond to your questions and stuff. But yeah, so we're going to be taking around in the garage today. Basically, looking at what's here, um, messing around with the, the stuff that we have on the shelves here, taking a little bit of an inventory because I have not been in here in a while, uh, trying to clean up so I can actually get a car in the garage, which is sort of what garages are for. <laughs> we'll see how successful I am on that. But I figured I'm going to be going through this stuff. I'm going to be playing around with it. Might as well talk to you guys. Uh, so I hope the audio is clear again. I'm just using the built-in mic from the MacBook here. So I uh, want to make sure that's okay. And a bunch of people in the chat saying hello today. We got Aaron, we got Jay, we got Matt, uh, we got Josh, we got Charlie, uh, we got Dale, Overseer Cave, Philip, hello Philip, uh, hello Nicholas, uh, let's see, hello David, I think I got everybody. Hello Scarlet Swordfish, hello everybody. So yeah, so yeah, you, you haven't seen this uh, video before unless you're uh, this this video this location before unless you're like a really hardcore Mac 84 person because the first ever video I shot was a trailer for like some of the things I might do and it was in this garage you can see the shelves are the same uh, the stuff here has sort of moved a bit but uh, yeah so <laughs> we have a, had reports of wild eeps here yep so uh, eep so hopefully um, if it gets noisy I'll close the garage door um, you're gonna hear cars going by and birds chirping. But uh, hopefully it's not too distracting. If it is, let me know. And I'll, I'll close the garage door there. But uh, sorry, I keep looking over here because that's where the, the screen is. Hey, Christian. And um, yeah, so I um, guess we'll go from here. So essentially, a lot of these shelves are filled with Macs and stuff. And slowly I brought them into the basement. And then I needed to put those shelves in the basement because I brought too much of the stuff in the basement. And... A lot of what remains here are duplicates or things that I don't have room to mess around with right now. Uh, I did go ahead and remove the batteries from all of these machines, so that was done a year or two ago. <laughs> no, that, that is natural light, and the, the sun is blinding me as it sets. I'm in my garage right now, so um, it's probably the only natural light you're going to get here. But uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a window right here. It's shining right in my face. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not used to natural light, especially in my live stream. So th that's a first, I guess. <laughs> I do have all the parts. That's just the box of it. But I do have all the parts of the Sega Activator. Uh, my brother gave it to me uh, as a birthday gift a few years ago. Not a few years, probably more than 10 years ago at this point. But, yeah, that's just the box for it. I have the videotape. I think it's, yeah, the, the videotape that goes with it. So, Stop. Check out this tape. So that's exactly what you would do if you were to purchase that crazy contraption. So there's a good thumbnail for you. But uh, yeah, hey, Trina. If I uh, did not say hello to you already, hello. Um, so yeah, I'm actually going to close the garage door because uh, it's going to be getting cold in a little bit as the sun goes down and uh, I already have a jacket on. So uh, let me just walk over here, push a button. Actually, this button's closer.
Whisper quiet. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, I have a little seat here so I could sit down. Um, but we're going to be going through some things here. One thing I found while I was cleaning up, I just have it covered right now because I want to show it to you and reveal it. Um, yeah, so this is like, this is like 99% of the electronic stuff in my garage. There's an arcade cabinet, and then there's some style writers, and then there's like a stereo and a Pentium 2 tower, but this is like 90% of it, and then the rest is in the basement there uh, that you usually see in the stream, but um, yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> and not, not all of it's good, trust me, there's a lot of junk here that uh, I have to sort through and toss out, because there's a lot of old DVDs or TVs, or these, these are all... These are all iMac parts a, a friend of mine gave me, um, and uh, he, he couldn't use them anymore. They're like 2010, 2011, but uh, the motherboards all have issues, don't, don't have any good graphics cards, don't think there are any screens. So they're basically like the shells. It's like there's a stick of memory in one, you know, <laughs> just like purely parts. Uh, and I have a 2011, 27-inch uh, iMac, and there's like at least two or three of those there, so it's like, all right. I need a sensor or I need a port or something. I guess I could pull it up from there. But uh, we, we're not going to be testing printers today. I'm sorry, Christian. But, 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 but uh, I won a, an eBay auction of a uh, memory card for an image writer, too. Uh, so that would allow me to print more to the image writer without waiting for the Mac to send all the data and hogging up the computer. And apparently that also helps it, you know, do copy functions and stuff like that. So we'll be playing around with that, not today, but whenever that arrives. But the Image Writer 2 works surprisingly well. It's That thing's a tank. I've never had a problem with it. The only time I ever had a problem with it was uh, a software issue, and that was because macOS, I think 8.6 or whatever, doesn't have the right driver or doesn't like printing to that printer and like the high quality setting. But the Image Writer 2 is a, is a much, much uh, gentler printer to work with. So uh, hopefully I won't have any issues with those. And, and I've been printing on it all, all this time. If you're a patron of mine, uh, in fact, I have to probably send more of them out at this point now. But if you're a patron of mine, if you have been a patron for, I think, a few months, I put it, uh, depending on what level you are, uh, you get a certificate in the mail of something kooky that I print out on my image writer, too. Uh, so that's something that um, I'm happy to, to send to people as a, a, a small token of my appreciation. I saw that, Charlie. I thought that was mine. No, I don't need a fourth or a fifth. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you glad you're able to sell that. But uh, yeah, so you think you have the same box version of Office, says Dana. Well, hello, Dana. Yeah, so this this I got at a thrift store not too long ago. Uh, I think all the discs are in there. But uh, Scarlet Sword Fist just did some Image Writer 2 printing today. I saw you did a live stream too. I'm sorry I missed it, but uh, I have to go back and check that out. The output from it is kind of ugly. Oh, you could you could probably. Uh, fix that though. Probably just need a new ribbon, maybe some cleaning. You'll be fine. So yeah, first thing I want to show you guys is something I came across uh, earlier when I was cleaning up the garage a few days ago. And I texted some of the Mac Deck guys already, so they probably saw this. But uh, I was looking on a shelf and there was a bag covering something and I moved the bag and lo and behold, I found this little guy. This beautiful little Macintosh G4Q. Now, I knew I had uh, one of these, and I knew I had two of them at some point uh, because I bought one off eBay, and then as soon as I got that, uh, my brother found one locally, and he was able to pick one up for me. So, <laughs> Cube, why is, it, why is YouTube censoring Cube in all, in all caps? <laughs> yes, if, if that's the way I die, well, first off, like and subscribe. <laughs> Second off, I saw it coming. So... <laughs> well, see, so uh, I bought one off of eBay years ago, and it didn't have the power cord or anything. It was just the cube. And I got the power cord from a friend of mine, uh, and then shortly afterwards, I saw someone selling the cube with all the manuals, and not the box, but all the manuals and a screen for like 100 bucks. And this is probably at least 10 years ago or so. And I jumped on that, because I'm like, that's a good deal on a cube. So I ended up with two of them. I did thought... I, I, I I thought I sold one, but I guess I never did. Uh, this one isn't in too bad of a condition. The uh, plastic is, it's not perfect. There are some little nips and such in it. We'll 
mix rather. Uh, but just as a cube is supposed to, it comes out. Looks very pretty. Looks like we have uh, three memory pieces in there. We have no airport card slot, but uh, no airport card rather. But I could put uh, put that in there. And looks like our standard ATI uh, card port number 109727002 from the year 2000. And uh, oh, that that actually has a little battery inside, but that shouldn't be too bad. Um, and this is where I discovered was uh, my SCSI, my not SCSI, but my uh, IDE to SATA adapter is right down there. It's hard to see, but uh, I put a SATA SSD in here probably around 2012 or so. And I must have left the adapter in there because I've been looking for it ever since. <laughs> that battery ain't too old. It's fine. Let's, let's look at the, uh, the date on that battery. The G4, after all, it's not a, not a, an old 68K machine. It only has an expiration date of, where's the expiration date? Eh, whatever. We'll keep it out if you guys don't want the, the not as old battery in there. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, pretty neat machine. I will be playing around with this, uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, I do have another one. Um, I think they are both. The, uh, you know, the low-end one, they're only the, I think it's the uh, 450 megahertz model. So nothing too crazy, nothing modded or anything. But, uh, yeah, this is a 450 megahertz, 1 megabyte of cache, came with 64 megs of memory, 20 gigabyte hard drive, DVD-ROM drive, 56K modem, and speakers. I think I have a set of speakers for this somewhere. I, I don't recall. I'll have to check. Let's see. Uh, Jay says he is at capacity for blue and white Q3s. Oh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> the ones down here are, are yeah, they need some work. Uh, let's say um, G3s now have exploding batteries too. Well, it's not just that the model has exploding batteries. It's that the time has now come at that magical age in every battery's life where it is no longer, uh, oh, now the sun's blinding me right in my eyes. I look, I look like some sort of monster. Like, uh, anyway, um, here, here. That's, that's for you, Jay. That's, <laughs> that's going to be a meme later. Anyway, um, <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, yes, it comes a time in every battery's life when it likes to leak and explode. So um, that is something that you have to be aware of just as things age. You know, the IMAX to me seem like they're not too old. And then it's like, oh, wait, that came out over 20 years ago. So, yeah, any battery that's uh, probably over five years old, over 10 years old, you probably have to look at. So uh, I do have a battery in a few of those IMAX that I probably have to remove. But uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I am some, some sort of monster, I'm sure. So I'm going to put this safely back on the shelf before I drop it or crack it or do something horrible to it. Ah. I will be taking that with me inside so it uh, is not uh, hanging around there. What is the oldest Apple computer you could use in 2020? Uh... Macintosh 128K? I can still use it. <laughs> you didn't define what I have to do with it or, or what I'm going to be doing with it. But uh, exactly, Dana. Define use. Uh, I personally use uh, a 2012 Mac Pro for my video editing and stuff. Uh, I find that perfectly capable. Before that, I was using a 2011 27-inch iMac, which I, I had no problem with. The graphics card just died, so I went to a Mac Pro. Uh, and uh, I'm streaming from a 2015 MacBook. So I, I, I don't really have too much new, new, new stuff. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what, uh, is going on here. Batteries. Does anyone want to test out my duo power supply? Uh, I will. If, uh, you're, if you're referring to a power book duo, Christian, although I don't think the shipping would make that worth it. But. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not something that's I'm going, I'm going to, uh, to run, uh, the latest OS. I'm still on High Sierra mostly, so. What is to the left of the cube? Well, we'll be going over that. Let's uh, get back to our, our stuff here. I'm going to move the tripod a little bit closer, maybe, if it doesn't get caught on too many things. It is already getting caught on things. Hold on. There we go. Let's put that down carefully. Not get anybody too dizzy here. And uh, let's point the camera back up a little bit. So, uh, a lot of junk here. A lot of stuff that's not computer-related, just junk. Um, got some cables here. Ah. One of you guys, if you're, uh, I'll give you a hint, this is for a Nintendo console. 
One of you will recognize what this cable is for and why it is so sought after, at least until Consul succeeded it. What do you think that's for? Sort of a trick question. Well, not a trick question, but like, yeah. I'd love to see a live stream test of it. <laughs> uh, visit modern websites and, of course, watch to YouTube. Well, uh, that's not really my definition of use a computer. Honestly, YouTube is not my definition of using a computer. Uh, using a computer is doing work, uh, writing something, uh, printing something, saving something, altering something. Uh, pretty much do a lot of that on old power mode. Yes, this is a component cable for a GameCube. Now, these are very sought after because of two factors. One, that not all GameCubes had the digital port on the back. They only had one of the regular analog AV ports. And uh, this is, uh, of course, a special digital connection that was only available on the ones that had that digital port. Now, the other thing is that you could only uh, buy this cable from Nintendo's website. And, of course, that's what I did. Uh, I don't recall if this is the exact one. However... Um, no, actually I sold that one. So, a uh, funny story behind a cable like this. Um, if you're probably a fan of video games, you know there are second-hand shops like GameStop, Funko Land, EB Games, whatever they're called these days, or if there are any of them still left. Um, they would just get stuff that people would trade in, and they would try and resell it, or they post a price on it. Sometimes you get some pretty good deals, because they get something obscure that's not really worth a lot, and they didn't know what it was, or anything like that. Um, so... What ended up happening is I was at one of these stores one time, and uh, I saw this cable in a bag, and it was in the Xbox section. And this kind of looks like an Xbox One video connector, but it's not. Um, and not Xbox One, I mean the original Xbox model from the early 2000s. And uh, so it was mislabeled as an Xbox video cable, they wanted five bucks for it. I instantly knew that this was a $60 cable, so I bought it for five bucks, and I think I flipped it on eBay for like 50 or $60. That was like one of my first eBay sales that were successful, so... Yeah, so that's the story behind this cable. I'm going to make sure this is not eaten by mice. Uh, we're going to put this somewhere safe, have it in this box. And that is where I'm going to remember I put it, and uh, I probably won't, and we'll lose it forever. But, uh, yeah. Didn't Apple invented the computer? Uh, no, they did not. There are many computers before Apple. Let's see, show the binoculars. Uh, that is not a set of binoculars, unfortunately. That is an old camera bag of my father's. <laughs> Working on upgrading my original Xbox hard drive. Yeah, those are fun. Especially when you lock yourself out. <laughs> yes. It, computer can be defined in many ways. Anyway, let's get back to the crap on the shelves. Uh, RCA Universal Remote. I uh, got an iPod Firewire Power Brick for the original iPods. How about that? So that's pretty neat. Take the camera. I don't think there's anything in there. We'll, we'll look in there. There's probably just manuals for old cameras, but we'll see. Uh, yes, there's uh, a bunch of goodies here. Let's look at this shelf first, and then we'll go down to the other. I think this is just the box. Yeah, so this, this is, whoop, there's a CD case on top of it. So this is a box, uh, oh, there's a sticker on it from a place that's not too far away here. Uh, so this is a box for an Apple 3.5 inch uh, floppy drive, as you can see. Yeah. So pretty neat. Uh, I think this is just the box. It's marked basement. There's a, a floppy disk uh, folder thing in there. There's a composite video cable. And there's actually a piece of styrofoam, one of the pieces. For the, hot, for the floppy drive. So, it wasn't completely empty, but uh, let's close this up correctly. I love finding this, though. I'll, I'll show you in a second once I close this flap up, if I, if I can. I want to be gentle here. There we go. Uh, this says uh, Hammett Microcomputer Division, and this is from Family Computer Center, 44 West Ferris Street, East Brunswick, New Jersey. <laughs> that, I'm sure, is long since gone. And uh, I'll have to look up that address later and see what's actually in there. But we have a, a shipping label with, uh, or a barcode label, rather. Um, oh, just a, a neat box overall. This is marked personal, and then it's marked basement. basement. So <laughs> someone stored this in their basement for a long time. Looks like a mini ImageWriter 2 box. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 
yes, Apple always did have nice packaging, which is which is lovely. Uh, let me make this chat a bit larger so I can actually see this without uh, squinting so much. So let me let me do that. Ah, when I do that, it zooms every window on the browser. That's not exactly what I wanted to do, but all right, that's. I guess that's close enough. But okay, yes, we do have some Sega stuff here. I'm a, a big Sega guy. Uh, I grew up with a Sega Genesis. Well, I grew up with an Atari 2600 and a Sega Genesis, but uh, I always liked the Sega stuff. So um, there's a box here for one. Uh, I don't think there's anything else too exciting on this. Uh, there's a wireless mouse box for uh, a uh, non Mighty Mouse. This is just the old single button Mighty Mouse. Hello, Matt. And uh, look at the price on that, 69 US dollars. Good boy. Uh, let's see what's inside here. Nothing of interest. Well, there's packaging stuff. So we have the wireless guide. I think there's a CD in there. It's probably some Apple stickers. So there's that. And there's two old batteries, uh, which have since seen better days. Um, I don't have a trash bag, but uh, I'll have to toss those out. There is a styrofoam for the original mouse that went in there. I do have this mouse. It still works. Uh, I remember keeping this, uh, using this rather, uh, during a presentation in high school. And uh, I had a power book that I brought in and uh, was using this mouth, mouse with it. And uh, I was able to advance my presentations here. Let's see, this, this, they put a sticker over the system requirements here. So these have, are obviously the updated requirements. But requirements, Macintosh computer with internal Bluetooth or external D-Link USB Bluetooth adapter, part number DDT120, rev B2 or later. Uh, requires Mac OS 10, 10.2.8 or 10.3.3 or later. Um, existing keyboard and mouse for setup, batteries if they're included. So, how about that? The original Apple wireless mouse with its little box. So, that's a little neat find there. Um, old posters. A bunch of keyboards here. Some of these are in better condition than others. That's why they are in the garage. This one actually looks pretty good. Oh, it's missing uh, missing an escape key over here. It's missing that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jay, that's not fair. He probably has the sound off. <laughs> but actually, that is a, that's a, a strong hinge there. And interesting, there's, a, and there's some dirt and grime on this. And who knows what animal probably pooped on it, but... This is a little uh, tag there that's telling you to uh, press the eject key. Uh, come on, focus. Press the eject key to uh, eject the uh, CD drive. So, not too bad. It's only missing one key. Got some uh, Sega Saturn games here. Uh, this is just the box, but this is for Sega Rally. It's a fun one. So, that's what that is. I have no idea what's in this box. Speed stream. Uh, there's a bunch of manuals and books and magazines. I don't know what you're going to find. Even an older Mac addict. This one's all crumbled up. Yes, the Saturn uses regular CD ROMs or CD plus G ROMs. Uh, still have a readable day on this thing. This is pretty much destroyed here. Uh, I'll go to the index page. June 1999. So yeah, this magazine has seen much better days. I'm sure there's a, a good one on uh, archive.org. Uh, unfortunately, they are not. They moved to uh, Mac Life in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, and uh, they are no longer, I believe, a uh, have a printed, published magazine. So yeah, I mean they were good. I didn't really follow them after they went to Mac Life too much, but some. Paper envelopes here, more magazines. We got part of an iBook G3. <laughs> this was from a 500 megahertz model. I had a ton of parts for those. A metal shield for one. More metal shields. Uh, got a coaxial cable, Ethernet cable. No, this is a. I apparently got it for 97 cents at a Goodwill. But this is a uh, USB A to B adapter. PCI Ethernet card, probably for a PC. VGA video card. Trident Blade 3D from 1998 for a PC. 
it's a VGA thing. Uh, another Incorrect card from next year. A little Sonic the Hedgehog toy from uh, like a, an old uh, McDonald's Happy Meal or one of those things. You push the button and you like little wheels and spins fast. Pretty cool, little R two D two guy hanging around. So interesting to see what's in that box. I'm gonna go back on the shelf, but at least I now know what's in there. Something's buzzing here. Oh. Sorry. Yes, who doesn't have a bunch of G3 Snow iBook parts? <laughs> That's good. Uh, this I got fairly recently. I brought it in here with the garage just to, to show you guys. But this is something that's pretty cool. Some of you may know exactly what this is. Others may have no idea what the heck I'm holding up here. But uh, it is indeed for the Sega Genesis. And uh, there's a little modem port there. Yes, this is a modem for the Sega Genesis. lets you uh, play people online for a handful of games when it came out. It's pretty neat. And I got it locally. There's a video game store in Asbury Park, New Jersey, called Kill Screen Games. Uh, Phil runs that store. He's a very, very nice guy. And uh, if you just want to, like, drool over video game stuff, just go on Instagram and go to Kill Screen Games. Uh, he has a lot of cool stuff there. And uh, I never was able to use this service or the Sega Channel service when I was young. It cost money. I didn't have money. Um, but there's a great documentary about this that came out, I think, last year about uh, the company, the rise and fall of it, etc. A lot of the neat engineering tricks that they did to actually get two-player to work over a slow dial-up connection that wasn't even 56K. It was, when you, you know, calculated all the odds and stuff, it was really interesting. Um, but there are people today that are still messing around with this and hacking it and things like DreamPie that are trying to get this back. So uh, when I saw this come up, I'm like, all right, let's... Uh, Let's uh, take a look, and, and I was able to get this, and I'd be very interested in playing around with it soon. Uh, I Like I said, I, I was a, a huge Sega fan. I am a Sega fan still. In fact, there's a Sega arcade at the other end of this garage that I'm fixing up. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's the uh, X-Band adapter there. I'm going to put this back on the shelf. Hopefully I don't forget it on my way out. Uh, looks like the only other thing of note here are some keyboards. Oh, boy. These are heavy. One's a good one, one's a eh keyboard. So let's let's put uh, this box back on the shelf here. Oopsie. It's just a box. It's not that heavy. There we go. Almost dropped that thing. How about that? Um, so let's move this camera a little bit away so you're not looking up my nose here. Just reading up on the chat. Da, da, da. Yeah, replacing the hard drive. Uh, in those iMacs. Sometimes is not too fun. <laughs> well, Christian, I will we'll be sure to live stream anything that I'm doing with that so you can uh, live vicariously through me. <laughs> so we got uh, we got uh, two keyboards here. One looks like there's, oh, there's a mouse plugged in there. Uh, so I used to actually tinker around with things in the garage before, um, before I moved everything to the basement or slowly moved everything to the basement. Uh, you are welcome to come, Trina. You will be here for an unknown amount of weeks or months, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's just a regular Apple desktop bus mouse too. Let's see which cable is trapped over which here. All right. So we have a very nice keyboard here. This is an Apple extended keyboard too. Ooh, sorry, it's hard to see where I'm centered on frame here. Let me just move that. <laughs> All right, Jack. So here's a, a nice Apple extended keyboard too. Lovely machine here, lovely model rather. Um, has all its keys. Seems to be in tune. Yeah. It's like that photo of Steve Wozniak with the Apple II Platinum or whatever. But, uh, yeah, seems pretty neat. <laughs> wow, you are totally up for a while. I'm not going to stop you, but uh, <laughs> we have to prepare. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, let's see if this uh, – th these, uh, these feet always get stuck. There's, like, this little slide thing that you do. It's supposed to – 
supposed to bring this foot down to sort of extend the, uh, the keyboard from coming down. I'm going to help it a little bit because I don't want to break the plastic or anything like that. I don't think it's mushy. What are you talking about? I mean, to each their own, but... That's pretty springy. I'll show you what's mushy. This keyboard. This is a mushy keyboard. Ugh. You just have to, like, force the keys down. Okay, this is a much cheaper Apple design keyboard from the Performa era. No thank you. Much better. I bet new spirits will read about a local man drugged and robbed after Trina's visit. Yes! And uh, she will have an accomplice, accomplice, which is my wife, who will happily hand over any of my crap to her. So. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, I'm not going to force this uh, thing to come out here, but it looks like it just it's in pretty good condition. So I'm going to bring this inside. I'm going to play around with it. Uh, I probably have uh, a few more of these hiding around somewhere here. Um, and some of them are in better condition than others. That back there, and yeah, here's the the mushier type. The only good thing about this is it has a built-in cable. So, yeah, I mean, if you need a keyboard and you don't have one and you need it, it'll work. This one has very yellow keycaps. Maybe it was just sitting here. The sun from that window was hitting it, but uh, yeah. Hey, Greg, thanks for stopping by. We're just looking at some things in the garage here for any of you who just stopped by. Just seeing what uh, I have on the shelves here, going through some stuff, cleaning up some stuff. It's uh, about it, really. <laughs> Feel free to ask questions, you know. Well, Greg will be uh, racing a little bit, so anybody who's into that can go join him. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, the keyboard on the PowerBook Duo is not exactly the... Uh, not exactly the pinnacle of uh, notebook typing there. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Must be the, the outside air. It's messing with me. All right, so that's uh, what else we got on the shelf. We have a, a bin of records. Uh, above here, there's some cool stuff. I'm not going to bring it down because it's just ridiculous. But uh, as I mentioned, hey, Dylan. As I mentioned, we have a bunch of iMacs here. Here's a box uh, for Color Style Writer 2400. Um, I forgot how I got that box. I think I was actually just like in a thrift store and they had a bunch of stuff in the box and I'm like, can I just have the box? And they looked at me like I had three heads and they're like, sure. Uh, so this is for a Color Style Writer 2400. It's in pretty good condition. Um, I'm curious if this is actually the, no, I don't, know if, I don't know if this is from a relative. I'm pretty sure I got this from a thrift store. But uh, it's in pretty good condition. The shipping label uh, with the purchase order and everything is still on it, which is kind of cool. And uh, what's nice about it is I could see exactly where it came from. The Comp USA that used to be located in Edison, New Jersey. And I don't know if there's a date on here. There's a shipment number. There's a purchase number. But uh, I don't see a date. But still interesting. Um, we have a part number. Uh, which is M2888LL slash A. That's for the Sauber 2400. Decent inkjet printer. I'm actually working on a scripted video uh, for one of these style writers, and that should be done hopefully soon. I'd be happy to share you with that. Happy to share that with you. I cannot speak tonight. Uh, what's your opinion on modern Apple and the new iPhone SE release today? Uh, I don't actually necessarily have a problem with the iPhone SE. Um, you need an iPhone, it's pretty cheap. Uh, it's going to be very similar to my iPhone 8. Um, it doesn't have a headphone jack, so one more similarity to the iPhone 8. It has a cheaper uh, screen. It's not an OLED one, I believe, or whatever the terminology is. They, they changed the functionality of the, the uh, not the functionality, the um, technology of the screen. They use a cheaper screen. And uh, they made the camera, uh, you know, it's not as, as fancy as some of the other ones. It's basically like an iPhone 8, essentially. Uh, same form factor, pretty much. Um, has wireless charging, which is nice. Has Touch ID, which is nice, so you don't have to mess with Face ID stuff. Uh, and with the iPhone 8 discontinued, if my iPhone 8 broke today, uh, I would consider that. I'd probably go with an iPhone 11 or something, but I like that Touch ID button. 
not really I've never used Face ID I just I'm not a fan so yeah but uh, you know modern Apple I mean look there's they make okay stuff I'm just not I, I don't have the money to buy the new stuff and uh, doesn't the new Mac Pro look nice? Yeah, it does. I'm not going to spend six grand to edit my YouTube videos on it. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, will I get a 4K camera? Well, I have a 4K camera on my iPhone 8. And it might not be the best thing, but I honestly shoot most of my footage for my videos on this camera. And uh, I get some pretty good close-ups with that. You know, in the right lighting, uh, if you're patient, you, you, you get some good footage on that. So um, anything that's newer would be nice. Uh, like, you know better sensors in the iPhone 11 or something. And my, my phone's a pretty old one, so eventually I'll probably have to upgrade. But uh, I don't know about that, Charlie. <laughs> like, that's an empty box. This cube is, I mean, maybe. I mean, if you technically don't own your house, then you don't have anything to compare to it. But if it's your parents' house you're talking about, well, <laughs> I could very much sell things. Uh, and yes, those are way too many objects. Those are just parts, Greg. There's no, there's no screens in them. Uh, I basically have parts in case I need it. Anybody needs iMac parts, you let me know. <laughs> Probably too big to ship, but yeah. Um, yeah, I could, I honestly, I could sell some things. Um, part of the reason I'm looking through some of this stuff, there's some duplicates. Like over here we have a bunch of Power Macs. If I go down here, a ah, bunch of Power Macs here. Uh, I don't need like three 7,500 towers. Or, oh, there's my Centra 650. I was looking for you. I don't need like three of these. You know, there's a, what is it, a 7250 workgroup server, 7290, Performa 635 CD, 7290 again, the Centra 650. So, like the duplicates live here. So that's, that's why they're hanging out here. So, and I only have two G4 cubes. That's all. I'm not, I don't have the world supply of them stashed. Thank you very much. You need a drive bracket for a 2008. Well, I don't have a 24 inch iMac. Uh, I only have a 20. The ones up here are 2010 and 2011s, uh, so I believe they're 20 or 21 inch and the 27 inch. So that's like the ones I got here. I don't know. I think Apple's philosophy has changed a lot. They used to try and just build like an excellent personal computer, and obviously times have changed, and everyone wants mobile stuff. So yeah, yeah. Do some research, Greg, on the bracket and let me know because. Uh, I'd be happy to send you something if you need it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Apple's going in a lot of different directions, and I don't necessarily agree with a lot of their stuff. As you probably uh, know, I do the Mac Yak podcast with a bunch of great guys, who some of which are in this chat right now. And that's every Thursday night. So that's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. So again, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, we do a Mac Yak podcast. Just go on Facebook, type in Mac Yak, Y-A-K, M-A-C-Y-A-K. And uh, we're on Twitter at Mac Yak Podcast is the handle. And you can follow us on there. We, we talk about new Apple stuff and our opinions on it all the time. So if, if you've ever watched one of those, you, you should not be surprised with my feelings of new Apple. <laughs> I have not used Catalina. Uh, my work machine is on Mojave. Uh, all my other machines are on High Sierra or lower. I, I don't have don't have any uh, any any reason to use anything newer. I was telling a customer about the stream yesterday. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't, I just, uh, you know, there are features, sure, I'd love to use of the new OS, and there's probably a newer version of Final Cut Pro that will render faster or whatever. I just don't have the machine that's going to natively support it. I've messed around with patches and stuff before. If it gets to the point, I'm sure I could get a metal video card and probably patch my 2012 Mac Pro and run Catalina or whatever on it. But I still want to use 32-bit apps, and uh, I'm not going to, you know, go, go off on uh, upgrading anytime soon. Oh, uh, Charlie started to stream in 45 minutes. Yeah, no worries, Charlie. See you later. I'll probably be done by then, so <laughs> everyone could hop onto there. Uh, Sticking with Mojave for a while, Catalina sucks and lacks things like iTunes. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, not a huge fan of the newer Mac OSs. It's just, it's just not something I'm, I'm, I'm interested in. And that's Look, if I have to use it, I'll use it, but yeah. Yeah, they just split up iTunes in a bunch of things. It's not like really iTunes, but you get similar functionality. But. All right, anyway, that was uh, the first shelf we were looking at. I don't know if we're going to go through everything today, because there's a lot of crap here. But, uh, yeah, what we were looking at in the top was the Style Rider box. This is the box to my, perform uh, my uh, Ants Performa 
I believe it's a 616 CD. And so there's the box for that. It's beautiful. Um, part of it was cut for uh, proof of purchase. I think it was like one of these things you had to uh, go ahead and mail a proof of purchase and you get like a printer or something like that. But these boxes next to each other, the 2400 and the Performa, are funny because uh, she also had a 2400 model. Uh, so that's just something that, you know, it, it goes perfectly with that. So I still have that machine somewhere in the basement. I actually think that might have been the one I messed around with the live stream <laughs> the other day when we were trying to the Ethernet cards on the 2SI and the, the 6100 machine. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a box copy of Office here. I wonder if I could get that down without having everything fall on top of me. <laughs> well, let's see. Because uh, in that bag, oh, it was an ADB cable that fell to the ground. This was a good find. I can tell you exactly when I purchased this because there's a little, little label on it. So this I paid $1.49 for. And this was April 16th, 2014. Well, that would be six years ago tomorrow. How about that? Let's uh, show you I'm not bluffing there. There's the tag. Jay's eating dinner, I believe, so he's not going to be here for a little bit. Well, come on. Come on, focus. There you go. How about that? So, pretty cool. So, you can, these are with the longer connectors there, so some of the earlier ones. But, yep, no worries about uh, running out of ADB cables anytime soon. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to step on this chair here as I knock over things. And, uh, that chair kind of cracked, so don't try this at home. That is not a healthy noise. My ass is showing, just don't look. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Have survived. Oh, this thing is heavy. Yeah, actually, I want to do something like that. So, so let's sit down on the chair because if it collapses while I'm sitting down, that's gonna be funny either way. All right, Greg, see you later. So this, Dana, let's see if this is the same one that you have. This is branded as the Microsoft Office, the essential programs for the Macintosh that work together. So we have Excel, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Mail, and Microsoft PowerPoint, and a huge getting started section. I used to have another one of these, I think, but copyright date of 1993, Microsoft Word 5.1, Excel 4.0, and PowerPoint 3.0. So yeah, that's what's in here. Ugh. And it's kind of like set up like a book, kind of. I don't know if everything's in here. Yeah, books. I don't know if the discs are in here or not. Order form. Okay. Excel. Ah, this has the most books. A lot of books in there. Ah. What'd you say, Dana? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yours is much smaller. Yeah, this this is a big boy. Uh, oh here, we have some discs here. They look like they're sealed, honestly. Pulling a Grudy here. I'm doing things one-handed. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, these are 800K discs of Microsoft Word 5.1. So how about that? And uh, looks like this is a sealed copy of Excel. Uh, it says one of two. So, so don't forget to register. There are three floppies in here. And there's another four floppies. These are also Excel. So this is only missing PowerPoint, maybe, and uh, and mail, unless uh, that happened to be on. Let's just. This one's actually open, I think. Let's see, Microsoft Word, Word. Yeah, it's all Microsoft Word. So we're missing some disks, but majority of it's here. So bugging me that the titles are seized to fit the spine size. Yeah, well. What do you expect from Microsoft? I mean, really? Where 
these discs say uh, Macintosh Series 800K. This also says Macintosh Series 800K. Macintosh Series 800K. Okay. So, okay. Uh, we have our little getting started thing. That's where all of these discs were hidden. So we're going to put those back in. I think I remember the thrift store that I got this at. Unfortunately, they are no longer operational. It was literally one of those places that it's like a building and there's just tons of stuff there. What are the black towers? Oh, those, my friend, are industrial laser disc players by Pioneer, which I kind of regret purchasing, and I'll explain why. <laughs> but yeah, let's uh, let's put this somewhere uh, where I'm not going to have to reach up and grab it uh, again. Uh, let's move some of this stuff over. Let's see if that'll fit there. And it does. How about that? Looks nice on the, the shelf, too. Industrial. Yes, they are industrial. So, might as well sit down for a second and uh, go over some of this stuff. Because, I mean, well, we have we have some goodies here. Might as well tell you about them. Um, as I was saying, there's a lot of these, these Power Macs here. Uh, and these are like the duplicates that I have. So, in fact, let's get a little cozy here. Get the tripod here. And uh, how can I bring this down further? Because I'm not too happy with this angle. Nope. Wait, hold on. <laughs> this is uh, strange, but okay. There we go. We could adjust the camera a little bit. Okay, so um, yeah, we have some Power Max over here. And uh, we have some over here. That's a tough question. Everyone, everyone always asks me, like, my favorite Mac. Um, I usually split it up into sections. Probably overall, I'd have to say the Keylime uh, clamshell iBook G3, the 466 megahertz special edition model. That, that and the 12 inch PowerBook G4, I think, are my, my two favorites. Okay, so uh, where was I? Um, yeah, just uh, gonna go over briefly this stuff here. There's, there's, in fact, I'm, uh, my chair is sort of in the way. Let's see if I could. And there's a light here, which uh, is helping you see things. There we go. So. Blinding right now. Uh, the natural light has faded into the distance. So, all right. So uh, that's, that's a good choice, Aaron. So um, yeah, we have some Power Max here. Uh, we have a 7600 132. We have another 7290. I don't know how I ended up with so many of those. And the 7500 100. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, five seven thousand series Power Max just sitting on these shelves here. <laughs> so yeah, and there's probably a good two or three of them downstairs. Oh, make that six. There's one over there. Um, so yeah, that's why they're in the garage right now. It's not really doing anything. Um, and you know, if I need to use one, I, I come in here and I take it off the shelf. Um, a lot of them don't have hard drives in them. I probably took out some of the memory. Yeah, this says no hard drive, no memory. Uh, one over there says no hard drive, no memory. Uh, this says Mac OS 9.1 boots fine. Uh, PowerPC 601, 16 megs of RAM. <laughs> Needs more memory, very slow. That notice from November 14th, 2009. Yeah, I believe with 16 megs of RAM, it's going to be very, very slow booting into OS 9. I don't even know how that's possible. Yeah, how that's possible. Hmm. Uh, do I have 5G in my area? I not, They call it 5GE, but it's technically just like 4G, but enhanced. I don't think they're going to roll anything out anytime soon. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes. I wish I wish these were like the Quadras. <laughs> yeah, you know the uh, the oh the Power CD. Oh, yeah, I have one of those. I have to I have to get it working though. Um, I I do want to do an episode. I I am I wrote the episode of, that I want to to do it about uh about Apple Talk and networking and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be networking a bunch of machines together. So you'll probably see maybe one of these or a similar one. Um, this here is a pretty darn good VCR. It's a Sony JVC Super VHS player. Uh, well, it records too, so it's a VHS recorder. And yeah, Super VHS was one of those things where you could get uh, a little bit more resolution on your VHS tapes. But the best thing about these is that... Uh, you have an S-Video out port here. An S-Video, uh, unlike composite, composite signals just cram all the video signals together. 
S-Video will separate the chrominance and luminance of the video. Even if you don't have an S-Video recorded VHS tape, it actually looks a little bit better. You get a little bit better resolution. So I use these when I'm copying over family VHS tapes, home movies, stuff like that. I want the best possible quality out of, um, yeah. So, oh, hey, Grudy, eep. <laughs> uh, you be careful driving. You can always watch my stream later. You can't do that if you're dead. So ease off there on the gas pedal. <laughs> no, safe, safe travel, sir. But uh, yeah, so this is this is a pretty nice VCR. I uh, probably got it at a thrift store. Uh, I have a few of these inside. I actually have one boxed. Uh, it's not here, but uh, if you see that little cardboard box at the end of the shelf there where my finger's pointing, that's actually a box of uh, brand new SVHS tapes that are sealed. So I have to probably be uh, looking at that sometime soon. But yeah, just a bunch of Power Max here. Uh, CD drives missing from this one, uh, but all of them have floppy drives. And yeah, so some Power Max, fun stuff there. Um, looks like we got some magazines. Oh boy. Yeah, so here's here's a lot of uh, <laughs> Groat. I like that. Welcome to Groat Mods. Um, this is a bunch of Mac Attic magazines. Uh, Y2K special. <laughs> Your 2000 issue. Ah. Uh, Nice. A lot of these are on the Internet Archive. Probably most of them, actually. I think they got most of them until the to the really recent ones. Um, yeah. I will not buy a Macintosh until they put in a 4K webcam. Uh, expect to never buy a Macintosh then, because they're still using 720p webcams in some of their MacBooks. Apple would rather you buy an external one. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> reviews magazines. Yes! Broken JPEG. We're going to look at every page of these magazines and make everybody tired. Uh -huh. Oh, issues of Mac Home. This is your last issue of Mac Home. What year is this? Uh... Oh, these are from my aunt because it has her mailing address on them. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> these magazines are just worth it for the ads. So this is uh, a July 2000 issue of Mac Home Magazine. So this is a, a magazine that was, this is in great condition too. I wish I had one of those scanners that would uh, you know, do magazines well. well. I have one of these US, USB hubs. Unfortunately, it's a Graphire one. It's not too pretty. Not a, not a Lime one or anything like that. I just love looking at, well, just look at the graphics. Like a little, little mailbox guy. Pretty cool. Ads for a digital camera here. Ads for surge protectors here. I remember these ads for Internet Explorer 5. I was always confused. I'm like, why is there a hand? What the heck? And I'm like, oh, Internet Explorer 5. There are five fingers. Uh, 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 get it? Yeah. That's... <laughs> These, these, these are in pretty good condition. I'm going to have to take some of these inside and thumb through them. Might be a whole other live stream where I'm just messing around reading magazines. <laughs> Look at this desk. Rudy, don't crash your car, but I think you need this this chair that has like <laughs> a holder for an iBook clamshell on it. Sort of like it looks like a college chair. Don't respond to me while you're driving. Just nod your head and, and I'll, I'll telekinetically know that you... You've seen this, but uh, the complete seat. This is a body built. That's the name of the company there. B O D Y B I L T. Wouldn't it be great to have a chair you could love as much as your Mac? I'm going to read this in, a, in my uh, best uh, LGR impression. Uh, Wouldn't it be great if you could sit at your Mac with no back pain? Introducing the body built chair designed by studying astronauts resisting the weight weightlessness of space to determine the body's preferred posture. 10 adjustable features and a unique pressure reducing seat contour help you emulate that natural stress free position in the comfort of your own home, office, or both. For more information at Body Built Chairs, visit www.bodybuilt.com. Yeah, so that's a, a very interesting chair there. <laughs> oh boy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all night. <laughs> that was the joke. All right, so what else we got? USB hubs. Ah, this is, the, this is one of the coolest back 
uh, section of the magazine is the back where you have all the prices of this stuff. Ah, oh, boy. Got a 4X CD uh, burner for 300 bucks. Got a bubble jet printer, 50 bucks. USB uh, hubs, zip drives, floppy drives. Uh, look at look at that look at that lime green iMac TV. Mm. 400 megahertz. Your choice of any Mac purchase with any Mac purchase. You got a nice iBook there in the top left. I can look at this stuff all day. Oh boy, that is beautiful. Uh, there's a nice there's a nice uh, CRT cinema display there. <laughs> there's the 22 inch Apple LCD display. Four thousand dollars. Oh boy, I thought Apple's new display was pricey. <laughs> nice one, Christian. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, he looks at what they sold for new and he adds a couple thousand. But uh, yeah, all right. So that's that. I'm not gonna go through all these, but we got a bunch of Mac addicts here. This was from July 2000. Again, in very good condition. I'm gonna guess most of these were for my aunt because. Uh, she used to subscribe to these magazines even when uh, I didn't, and she kept them in, in very nice shape. So uh, I'm happy to have them here. Uh, what else we got here? We have another. I'm just seeing if there are any different magazines here. Most of them are Mac Addict. Uh, Scientific American Explorations. Ten digital cameras for your family. Okay. Uh, Mac Home from September of 2000. That's pretty cool. And uh, truly useful tips for every Mac user. How to choose an ISP, how to troubleshoot your Mac, how to get internet radio, make custom letterheads. We got stuff about scanners in here. I just thumbed through this. Uh, an advertisement for the first Sims. That's pretty cool. From uh, Maxis. What the heck is this? I never heard of this game before. Apparently this was a game for the Mac, the Sega Dreamcast, and the PC in the year 2000. It's, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this. F-A-K-K-2? <laughs> what the heck? It's like a doll. But, in stores now, Heavy Metal 2000, the soundtrack. Oh, it's, eh. Alright, it's some, um, like, game I'm assuming because it, it says it's the sexiest video game of the year if that's a thing yeah oh okay and they should have it just says the adventures of it doesn't say heavy metal on it on that area but anyway it's an advertisement they're gonna make you just look at things oh here you go Jay here's a nice uh, nice little uh, this this might be something to add to your collection Jay if you are still here remember we were talking about the the g4 uh, puck, I'm sorry, the, the, the iMac puck mice and uh, little plastic adapters for it. Well, look over here. Mac Alley made what they call an iSuite. But there's these little plastic things that they go on top of this mouse. Now, it's not for a puck mouse, but it's the same similar idea. So, you know, not necessarily up your alley, but similar enough. And, oh, we got some uh, Griffin stuff up there. The i8, I wish I knew where mine was. I have no idea where that went. But you can make a ADB adapter. Uh... <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm not going to pronounce your username until you change it. <laughs> Don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> but uh, I believe it was Sam or John. We're going to call you, we're going to call you uh, Jam as a, as a, <laughs> hello Jam, how you doing? Uh, we got a, a Griffin iMate, uh, a G4 port, which is a serial port. And John, that's right. See, I remembered one of them. Sorry about that. Hey, John. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, those, those keyboards are pretty cool. So, a lot of nice accessories. Yeah, so we're, we're just in my garage. We're looking through some things. The sun is setting, so I have a, a light bulb two inches away from my face. And we found a whole bunch of magazines. So, I wasn't going through all of them. I was just looking at them. Probably bring these indoors if I get bored. And uh, look through the rest of them. So, that's, that's actually another one. Holy crap. Ugh. Wait a second. Wait a second. I just found something I've been looking for for a long time. Who knows what this is? Does this look familiar to anybody? Because I recognized it the second I saw it, but that's because I'm a dork. 
This is a close-up lens, I believe. It says uh, close-up lens, optional close-up lens for the Quick Take 150 digital camera. Let's see if it's uh, actually still in here. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little apple on it there, and uh, there's a little label that somebody printed out and uh, and wrote on it. Let's see if uh, it'll focus. Oh, upside down. But uh, there's too much light. It's not going to show. But uh, you should get a microphone. You sound a bit compressed. Well, I'm on Wi-Fi, and I was planning on going from my iPhone to stream, but I'm forced to use the, the MacBook's built-in microphone. I usually have a nice one. I'm not going to bring it out in the garage because if it falls down, it's going to hit the concrete. It's going to break. So usually I sound much better. Sorry if I'm a little compressed. All right, so let's open this up. Oh yeah, there we go. There's the there's the the, uh, the close-up lens attachment here. Oh, now I have to play with this. Oh boy, <laughs> that is cool. So that clips right onto your uh, Quick Take 150. Oh man, that is pretty cool. It's in the little case here. I knew I had one somewhere. I just had no idea what the heck happened to it. So that is neat. I will be taking that inside. I do not lose that. These cameras are pretty fun. LGR did a video about them not too long ago. I was planning on doing one, but uh, yeah. Hey, Bruce! Welcome to the party. We are in my garage, as you could probably maybe tell. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we we're just looking through some magazines, and I found some more. I'm not going to look through them all, but uh, got a bunch of Mac Addict magazines. Uh, let's see what years these are from. Uh, this is. Let me say. Uh, January 2001, let's see what else we got, uh, March 2000, December 2001, Macworld, April 1999, let's look at that one, that looks to be the oldest one here, of the bunch, if I can get that out of here, ah, wait, what did the top of this one say, <laughs> we abused the new iMac DV and test it too, Mac Addict from, uh, Let's say the date of uh, February 2000. That's a funny headline there. It's early here. I was doing morning stuff. Bruce is always working. He's a very serious individual. So here's an issue of Macworld, the ultimate internet guide uh, from April of 1999. So pretty cool graphic. I'm using your iMac as sort of like a, a light there. iMac must read, best Mac sites, best Mac browser, top search tips, essential web utilities. In King Kensington, there's a bunch of your accessories on the back. It's in pretty good condition. Uh, talking about the Zip Drive 250 is something you're, you're reviewing here. Um, astronomical capacity of a Lacey RAID system. Uh, reviews of a Power Mac G3 for that series of machines. Pretty cool. Uh, and that's um, what else we got in here. Looking at some CD drives, like I always love these graphics. Like it was somebody's job to make these graphics. Well, they just they must have had fun doing it. I mean, look at that. That's pretty cool. So this is about Mac OS X server. Pretty neat. Let's see if there's anything else. I'm just gonna thumb through here. See if there's anything else. Oh, look at that. It's an advertisement for a newer technology, uh, Power Mac G3 processor upgrade card. So that's pretty cool. So introducing the latest Apple G3. Want a G3 for your old Power Mac? Simply plug in a newer technology Max Power G3 processor upgrade card and a fraction of the cost of a new machine. Yeah, well, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Dana, they were. They, it's hard to do vector graphics. So. Hey, look, super savings. Let's save 74% on Macworld Magazine. Yeah, let's mail this in. Nobody will ever read that. Um... Only $7.99 for an iMac G3. How could you resist? Look at that Bondi Blue iMac G3. 233 megahertz. What year was this? April 1999. So, how are they doing that? <laughs> that was, uh, that was, it was pretty new. Oh, that's why. It was the older model. <laughs> yeah, they had the, the foodie colors out by then. And uh, yeah, so Mac Warehouse was selling the, the old Bondi version uh, for $8.99. And uh, why are they selling this one for $7.99? What's the difference here? Uh, 
CPU 1260, our CPU 1260. This must be refurbished. Yes, reconditioned. All right, so you get a reconditioned one to save 100 bucks. Uh, that's the difference. Cool. Copy a mist here. Here's that Mac Alley keyboard we saw. All right, I got I to gotta move on. I'm going to look at this stuff forever. We still got some look, things to look at here. But, uh, oh, boy. Fun times. Yeah, I don't think Apple's going to be doing that anytime soon. Uh, we'll be excited. But, uh, yeah, so, all right, we got some Power Macs here. Uh, I'm going to briefly look at some of the stuff below here because I'm not – I'm too cozy in my chair to, to move too closely. Let's not – Aim directly at my crotch, but um, let's see if we get the light in here. Ah, light bulb. Um, let's see if I could use. I have this little light here. Let's see if that will help us. There we go. We see a little bit of light here. So uh, we can see down here. I have a uh, lime green iMac case, and this is the uh, tray loading model. I got this years ago. A friend of mine sent this to me, and I was very thankful because I thought. I will never be able to afford or get a Lime iMac, so I'm going to just get the case for it, and eventually I'll be able to move the Strawberry iMac I have to this one, because this has the case for it. Well, I was very thankful that uh, Mike from Mike's Mac Shack and the, and the Mac Yak podcast uh, gave me a Lime Green iMac uh, last year, so I, I don't need uh, you know, necessarily to transform one anymore, but I have the case, which is nice. So, Thoughts on 8K cameras? I don't know, man. I'm not a huge uh, uh, photography professional or anything. Uh, I'm sure they would be cool to mention and play around with and use. Uh, I have a DSLR that only shoots 1080p, and my iPhone only shoots 4K, and I only have a 4K screen. That's my TV. I don't have uh, any LCDs or anything I'd do that to video edit on or anything like that. So I don't know. I don't know. We could probably, uh, probably go on YouTube and find... Uh, Someone who is uh, reviewing camera equipment has the money to, to review that stuff. I, I don't, honestly. I mean, I'd love to play around with that stuff. Don't get me wrong. I just uh, don't have any experience in it. So it can't guide you in the right direction, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, and then we have uh, a Dell LCD monitor here. Here's, a <laughs> here's another one I got from my old office. It has googly eyes on the front. Woo! <laughs> I have no idea if this thing works. Uh, just a VGA connector on it. Nothing too special. These actually... The ones with uh, this type of stand, these are notorious for the capacitors just failing in them. Uh, I bought one at one point and then sold it because uh, it did not work. But the guy just wanted the base for it. He just wanted the stand. So, yeah. But I, I have a few of these uh, sitting around here. Uh, there's another one over here. I think this one has some scratches on it. It has a USB hub built in. There's a Dell is a Pentium 3 tower. I bought this, let me see, you guys can't even see it. Let me move the camera over a little bit. There we go. So this, well, the tower in front of that. This tower here is a Dell, uh, I don't even know what model it is, but it's a Pentium 2 or Pentium 3. I basically bought it because I had a built-in jazz drive and a zip drive, and it was like 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, I think it had two hard drives, too. Let me see. I can still, yeah, $29. I think I paid half price for that. Uh, Dimension XPS D300. Has a floppy, has two floppy drives in there. I think you even have a five and a quarter drive I might have snagged out of there. But yeah, I just bought it for parts. And it actually booted up. But uh, yeah, what did I miss? I missed the note. I didn't uh, get the notification for some reason. Yeah, YouTube's notification is a little weird. Uh, that's why I suggest if you go to my Twitter account, if you're on Twitter, uh, just go to Mac84TV and follow me. Whenever I do a live stream or I'm about to, Usually tweet it out. But no worries. Uh, we're just looking at stuff in my garage. Uh, bit of a mess here, but uh, just looking at the shelves, seeing what's on there. Probably a lot of this stuff will be featured in a future video. So it's a nice little sneak peek here. Um, there's a, an e-machine set here. There's a, oh, I think this is, a, is it an 8mm? Yeah, 8mm and Super 8 uh, DeJuro DP787 dual uh, film projector. This, I believe, was my grandfather's. My dad gave it to me. Uh, I'm digitizing a lot of their old uh, home movies. Uh, not that I'll be necessarily using this projector, but I guess it never hurts to have some parts if you're looking for them. Reels or sprockets or what have you. So, yeah, immortal LCDs. Yeah, some of these have seen their better days. But, 
Speaking, uh, speaking of old technology here, let's see. Look at this behemoth. I am not even going to lift this up because I do not want to injure myself. But who could guess what this, this huge monstrosity is? Hey, wait. There's, a, <laughs> there's another Power Mac hiding behind this. Hold on. i got to show you guys. <laughs> there's, there's, a freaking, there's another Power Mac hiding behind this iMac here. Uh, no, not Video 2000. It is huge, though. You, you, you sort of sort of are, are getting that right. Oh yeah, this is a this is a huge top loaded VCR, and uh, yeah, <laughs> this is a this is a huge huge little guy here. It's not a Betamax, unfortunately. Uh, this is a an RCA Selectivision uh, VHS uh, video cassette recorder. Uh, I do have a Betamax that is equally as large. That's uh, I I can't pan over to at the moment, but. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a huge, uh, huge little guy, and um, yeah, this uh, this I believe. Let me, let me I'm not going to lift it up, but I am going to take it out because I believe the dates on. Well, let me see if I could if I could just bend down and uh, see what the date is on it because there is a date on the back. It's a model VCT four hundred. Who wants to guess the year on this baby? Who wants to guess the year? I will I will send out a pair of Mac 84 pins to uh no wait, I can't do that because I gave you the model number. You're probably Googling it. Never mind. Uh who could guess the year? Just for fun. Who could guess the year of this thing? Made on July 31st. Aaron, if that was your guess, then you are very, very much. Correct. 1978 is the exact year that this was manufactured. July 31st, 1978. Who dates me? <laughs> but very good guesses. Yeah, it's a, a big old VCR there. It's not even fully fitting on the shelf there. I have to find a better space for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, what else we got down there? We have a 13-inch CRT. Uh, all right, Aaron, I'll... if you. I'll mail you some buttons, Aaron, if you want. That was very good guessing work on your part. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have a, let's see, a uh, an IBM. Uh, I believe it's a, yeah, it's a PS1 monitor. I have the the PC that goes that inside. That's my my in-laws' old old computer. And uh, looks like I have a oh, I'm all about that. Uh, this uh, nice little guy. Old Commodore 64. How about that? This is uh, pretty good condition too. I don't think this one works properly. Last time I messed with it, I don't think I got the power light on. Uh, could just be a messed up adapter, or it could be uh, these these the power bricks that used that were used with these machines. Uh, they kind of uh, had a tendency to fry the machine if the power adapter went wonky. I have no idea what this black thing is. Uh, to be honest with you, it has some sort of adhesive on it. Uh, looks like maybe it was to, uh, you might have put like little pieces of paper to remind you of what keys did or something. I have no idea. Might have just been something that was snapped on there. I have no idea. If anybody knows what that is for, it's not standard. It's probably some add on at some point. This is a Model 64. Um, serial number P2475419. Yep. Pretty cool. And, yeah, so that, that pretty much goes over this shelf here. Uh, we don't have too much more to look at today. I don't even know how long I've been out here for. Uh, let's see. Uh, an hour and 14 minutes. Okay, we'll go on a little bit longer. And, um, we'll cover what's on this shelf here. And then we'll probably mosey on along there. But, um... Let me resituate myself. We got a box I'm going to put back here. Reposition my chair so I can actually say hello to you people. 
That light is way too close now. <laughs> Blinded! Ah, so, hello Rusty. You said uh, it's for paper to look at what you were typing. In high school they had typing class. Ah, okay. That would explain that, I guess. That's pretty neat. Might be missing a piece there, but uh, looks pretty neat anyway. But uh, yeah, let's um, let's bring the camera a little bit closer so we could focus on some of the goodies here. Oh, that's I didn't. Uh, I'm sorry. I know some of you were kind of drooling at the Genesis stuff there, and I didn't even bother to bring that out. There's a lot of crap here. I'm not really going to go through much of it. In fact, um, oh, that light is way too bright. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, I keep saying that, but uh, there's a bunch of DVD cases here. Uh, there's a Final Cut Pro 3 user's manual. This is an old uh, camera bag. I know, Dana, you were curious about this. Uh, yeah, there's lenses and filters and all sorts of goodies in a very, very 1970s bag. That's because it was the 70s, baby. And uh, top rain cowhide oh boy uh yeah so <laughs> that's uh that's what this is yeah this this thing is uh has a life of its own i'm sure oh well, it's not in the best condition because it's literally missing half of it. But this is my original iPod box for the 5 gig model. This is the first one I got. This was, I believe they rebranded it. This was um, after uh, the 10 gigabyte model came out. Uh, it has the bottom, but not the top. And it's missing half of itself. But I still kept the box. Uh, yes, this is, a, this is a lightsaber box. Around here somewhere. There are more iPod boxes. Let me bring the camera closer. Whee, the magic of cameras. Uh, we, you know, <laughs> the magic of a short USB cable. Uh, yeah, we have two iPod boxes here. One's a U2 20 gig, uh, and one's just a standard 20 gig iPod box. So they're just hanging out, not doing too much. Uh, there's a TiVo here, an old Series 1 or Series 2 TiVo. Um, uh, mini DVI to DVI connector. Here's that Final Cut Pro 3 user's manual. A uh, library was just throwing them out. What is this from Nintendo? Hold on, let me put this back on here. From Redmond, Washington. Oh, this is this is from Nintendo. Nintendo Parts. Oh wow, I remember this. Okay, so when the original uh, Nintendo Wii came out, um, I had snapped off the cover. No, wait. Let me try and remember. Yeah, when the original Nintendo Wii came out, I think I, I got a secondhand one or whatever. It was a few years later. And, but it was missing the memory card and the GameCube port um, piece of plastic that would cover the system. Uh, those ports. You know, they were optional, but it was just a cosmetic thing. And at the time, uh, you could order replacements. And so that's what these are. These are brand new. Uh, this is, you know, the GameCube uh, port uh, piece of plastic there, a little door. And um, a little door for the memory card area, too. So that's pretty cool. Yes, Josh, I did know that. Um, I once went to the Apple store with my, it was either my PowerBook or my iBook, uh, and I had a GameCube desktop wallpaper on. and. Apple guys are like, oh, you know, that's an IBM Power PC CPU in there. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And, of course, they use a very similar one on the uh, GameCube and uh, the Wii U there. So, what the heck is this? <laughs> cool feet, man. These are little feet for your laptop to cool it. I guess you can put it in an iPad, too. So... Look inside. Okay. All right, there we go. Interesting little thing. So, that's the 
forgot I had those. Um, yeah, there's some toy lightsabers up there. Not not the not any of the fun replica stuff. Just the, the toy toy ones. All right, so let's look at this section here. So again, up there are a bunch of IMAX. <laughs> we got a bunch of IMAX there. Uh, all right, Aaron. Yep, no worries, man. Um, is that an Intel iMac right over there? Yeah, so there are a bunch of Intel iMacs. Again, these are just parts. I think I have one LCD up there, but it has, like, issues. Uh, it's probably messed up. And we got a bunch of Power Macs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up so I don't uh, fall asleep here. And uh, I'm going to move the camera a little bit. And uh, let's see if I can get a little closer. And, uh, yeah, so there used to be a lot of light in the garage, and... The sun is setting, so we don't really have too much of it. So I have one light bulb here. One light bulb. Hello, Coolio. And, uh... Oh, thank you very much, Aaron. And, yeah, so let me, let me scoot over to this direction. You can see the very strong light now that is being cast in this area. I have this little lamp, too. I guess. Actually, I turn that off. That's not helping too much. But, uh, yeah, let me see if uh, I can bring anything closer. I'm just using a Logitech, uh, what's it, uh, uh, C920. Uh, it's it's a pretty good webcam, actually. Uh, it just doesn't like to focus all the time. But, uh, yeah, so we're gonna, just for the last half of our stream here, uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to um, go through some of the other stuff that's here. You can see <laughs> we have an LC pizza box uh, part there. But let's, let's get the camera up here. Just uh, let me see if there's anything interesting. Probably not. No, I mean, there's here's the uh, there's a Star Rider box I talked about before. It's pretty cool. And here are all the IMAX. You can see not much left in that. Maybe the I don't even know if the power supply is good. The logic board's there, but I think the connectors are ripped off. So again, just keeping these for little parts, wires, cables, what have you. Uh, there is an LCD there. I don't think it really works. Uh, but let's let's see what uh, we have on this shelf here. Uh, looks like we got you know, we got some we got a VCR, another JVC SVHS deck, um, and we have what is this? It's a uh, we got the where is this? Oh, the, the badge label is ripped off. So I don't know, but it's a five disc uh, CD audio changer. So pretty neat. Um, just rearrange this window here so I could see what I'm pointing the camera at. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm pointing at. So I don't want to be pointing at the, uh, the thing. There. there we go. All right, cool. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's neat. And uh, we got a video card here. What is this? It is uh, NVIDIA Corporation. Uh, 32 megabyte. Looks like an AGP card for a slim machine. I don't know what that is for, to be honest with you. Um, let me... And uh, this. This is a tape drive. It's actually a SCSI tape drive. Get that a better look at this thing. Uh, I had a tape for this at one point. I have no idea where it went. But uh, this is a Seagate. At least it has a Seagate driver in it. Oh man, I love IMAX. I can never find any on Marketplace because everyone is throwing them out. Oh geez, well, maybe look to your recycling center. <laughs> That's what happens. These, these things, the glass cracks on them or whatever, and people just toss them. So if you have the means to repair them or if you have parts for them, might as well. Let me put this down here. Let me put the camera back on the tripod. Uh, and we're going to probably lift the tripod up a little bit. So... Go. Whoa! <laughs> you guys went for a ride there. Sorry about that. Let's tie that up there. All right. Hope this is not boring you guys. I know you're 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 hanging around, so you must be entertained somewhat. But uh, just figure while I'm in the garage, trying to lift this stuff in the loft, confirm what's here. A little Pokemon lunchbox type thingy. Oh, thank you, Nolan. I have no idea what's in here. Oh, got some floppies. <laughs> Three hours of AOL. Hyper card. Very cool. Uh, some random disc. I'll put that in my pocket. What is this? 
like a card reader? Oh, it's like one of those internal uh, PC card reader header thingies. Huh. Interesting. Uh, a lollipop? Oh, I remember what this was. I should not have stored it outside. Uh, Namcogames.com. When I went to a, uh, a computer event, they had these little lollipops that had a Pac-Man ghost on it. Probably toss that out. We have some Radio Shack solder. Probably not the type that Bruce would want to use. <laughs> it's a rosin core solder, 0 0.032 diameter. Uh, standard. I'll put that in my pocket. No sense in leaving it out here. And, uh, ooh, yeah, that, uh, that, uh, lollipop got a little sticky. Uh, not much. Just digging through some more things. We're looking at, uh, just some of the stuff on the shelves here. Um, that's right, I forgot to take uh, that down. One second. Let me put this down for one second. I promised Dana we would look at the Genesis stuff, and we did not. It's only going to take a second, because it's only the box. But this is the Sega Activator, and the lovely box here. And I do have all the parts. We do a video. I mean, people have done videos on them online, so I don't really have to check off that box or anything. But pretty neat to have that box for it. Again, that was a gift from my brother. And here, <laughs> oddly enough, in a Nintendo World New York bag, is the box for a. Uh, a Model 2 Sega Genesis. <laughs> yes, it will take a second, means it'll take an hour. Oh, look at that. That's, pre that's pretty cool. Sonic 2 system number 1614 through January 1995, get a second game when you purchase this item. Okay, cool. That's a pretty cool sticker. I know someone who collects Sonic stuff. I'll have to take a picture of that. Yeah, my Model 1, um, it works fine, but the controller um, the controller ports, uh, the soldering has cracked on them, so I have to redo that. Oh, wow. Babbage's. I remember that place. Uh, this lighting in here is not ideal, so I apologize. But Babbage's. Price of $199.99. That is really cool. Yeah, so this is just the box. There was a system in here. That system is now safely indoors, but uh, the box was uh, still... In the garage here, and uh, I'll put this back in the bag to somewhat protect it. My main device, uh, I have an iPhone 8 and I have a Mac Pro 2012 tower. <laughs> okay, got a version of uh, Macromedia Flash 4. <laughs> For, uh, Windows 95, 98, NT. All right, yeah. I'll put that there. <laughs> All right, let's get back to our little tin of goodies here. I want to forget. Um, yeah, so one of these USB header things. And we got a little fan. And a dead, definitely dead 9-volt battery. Ah. Yeah, so we're going to take that lollipop out of there. Oh, we got a little... Uh, Little Lego uh, Star Wars Imperial Guard here. Little keychain. Putting that in my pocket. <laughs> Pretty cool. And here, I'm going to take these floppies inside. Along, uh, just for the heck of it. And uh, this thing, I guess, could stay here. I don't think I have any use for that at this point. Sorry, just moving something real quick so I can move my foot. There we go. Put this thing back. Can you watch 8K videos on your 2012 iMac Pro? I, oh, 2012 Mac Pro. I don't know and I don't necessarily care. I mean, I could probably watch 4K video because I've done that before. I don't have a 4K monitor or an 8K monitor, so it really doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, to do that. Uh, I have a 27-inch a monitor. It's not a 4K monitor. It's good enough for me to record footage and 
edit it. But uh, like I said, I don't have an 8K camera. I have a hard enough time getting 4K content to worry about 8K content. That's the that's the future, as they say. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I have a 30-inch display, which is nice, but they, they get some image retention issues these days. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so we have this uh, tape drive that we were looking at next. This is a, a Seagate tape drive, uh, model CTD8000RS. It's a SCSI model. A bunch of jumpers there, too. Um, it's a picture of the jumper label. Let's try and focus that, because some poor soul like me it's probably like, that's the exact one I have. I need to know exactly what position those jumpers are in. Hopefully that's good enough. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, you have a hard drive here. Apparently for the Macintosh Performa 550 I have in the basement. I will be taking you inside as well. Uh, let's see, where were we here? Have the lid for a Performa 467. Ooh, you could guess what happened to that as the rust falls down to the bottom. Yeah, I think this was my only casualty of the batteries. Oh, yeah, the, the metal is just completely eaten away on that side there. Um, yeah, that is pretty gnarly. That reminds me, someone asked for some video footage of a battery exploding. I have to send it to him. I can take pictures of this thing. <laughs> battery went kaboom! And it was a Performa 467. And so I wrote down the, the little specs here on this post-it. Uh, no hard drive, no system OS, 4 megs of RAM, booted off of system 7.5 network access disk, Last tested January 1st, 2007. Yeah, well, I don't know how much longer it lasted after that, but it did not last too long. That board is now a parts board. Now we have a dead power supply. For cables, I guess. An Adaptec box. Some paperwork. Ah, that's cool. How can I focus this? Put the box down. Put more G in your G3. Pretty neat. This is a SCSI card by the looks of it. Or at least there's a box for a SCSI card. Uh, yep. This product or software may be designed to assist you in reproducing materials in which you own the copyright or have obtained permission to copy from the copyright owner. Unless you, you, you the copyright, have the copyright or have the permission to copy from the copyright owner, you may be violating copyright law and may be subject to payment of damages or other remedies. If you are uncertain about your rights, you should contact your legal advisor. And that paper was right next to this Toast for Deluxe Manual. <laughs> So, yeah. Thoughts on Windows users and Android users? Uh, look, you, you guys use what you want to use. I personally don't choose to use those devices as my main machines, and there are reasons why I don't. Uh, I personally like iOS. Uh, Android doesn't work the way my brain works, so I don't use it. If you guys want to use it, you're welcome to do so. Uh, this is an advertisement for Raygun. Vinyl and tape restoration for PC and Mac. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, I have no, no, no issues with anybody using something different than I use. Look, we all have different needs. We all have different preferences. We all have different purposes. As I said in this garage in 2017 or so, when I was doing my intro video for this channel, I'm not going to be bashing on Windows users or Android users on this channel. You guys use what you want to use. It's just not my personal preference, so I'm not going to argue about it. It's like telling me, like, uh, you know, oh, you, you don't like oranges. You know, how, how could you like, like oranges? Well, I just don't like oranges. But it's, I don't know. <laughs> and I have an Android that needs fixing, too, Christian. I bet yours gets fixed sooner than mine does. Uh, wow, this light is just, like, making me look like a ghost here. Let me back the light up slightly. But, yeah, there we go. 
Alright, um, what else we got over here? This tripod has a bit of a mind of its own here, so. There we go. <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, I have a keyboard, a little iPod, 30 pin box. Cable's not in here, so it's just a little box. Um, see if I can move this light closer because unfortunately it's getting a little bit too dark for you guys to see some things. And if uh, I can't show you things correctly, then it's sort of pointless. Let's see if I can put this light over here. That might work a little bit better as I'm blinded. I'm blinded for the views. Nope, that's not going to work. If I put it down there. You can tell this was extremely professionally set up before I went live here today. Ah, that is very bright. But if we put the camera in front of it, maybe nobody will notice. Nope, you will. <laughs> Hearing you is a challenge. Well, I apologize for that, Jay. I will try and bring the MacBook closer and talk louder. We put the camera back where it was supposed to be. There, that's a little bit better. I'm sorry if you can't hear me. Um, that's my fault. I'm using the built-in microphone from the MacBook. I, I thought I was going to be able to use something different. Let me see if there's any adjustments I can make on uh, OBS here. No, it looks like that microphone is maxed out, unfortunately. So sorry about that. Anybody who's uh, having an issue there, my apologies. But uh, we're not going to be here too much longer. Um, we've been streaming for about an hour and a half. So we'll probably go on for another 20 minutes or so. I think that's about as much uh, I have left to show you guys anyway. So just adjusting some things here. Okay, cool. So I um, have an old uh, keyboard here. What is this? It's a Hewlett Packard. with missing some plastic bezel here, but it's a USB keyboard. And the reason I kept it, it has USB ports here, which is quite, quite uncommon on PC uh, keyboards of the day. Um, so yeah, we got, uh, what else we got over here? Uh, some MacBook parts. They're, uh, white bat MacBook parts. Got a motherboard here. Uh, don't know. It's like the 2006, 2007 models. Yeah, these are two motherboards and, uh, back back of a, a, a screen there and I gone ahead and moved the chat so I can't really see Do you have any Apple products new in the box yes well not new new but uh, I do have ones that are in pretty good cosmetic condition uh, I have a Macintosh plus that I uh, unboxed not too long ago if you search my channel I did a video on that Old box for a GPS. Anything interesting in there? Nope. There's something like this I could probably toss out because it's just a box for a GPS with like the mounting hardware in there. Would need any mounts for a Garmin Nuvi 255. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> we got ladder covers. Okay. It is a garage after all. There's a bunch of weird stuff in here. Uh, these are the SVHS tapes we were talking about before. Let me move the camera a bit down. There we go. Um, and. Got some power supplies here. Some not not. There's not too much exciting here. There's there's these power max here. So again, workgroup server 25 uh, 2550 with 120 megahertz processor. Uh, the sticker on here says Mac OS 7.5.5. Uh, it was tested on April 18th, 2006, when I last bought it. I mean that's when I bought it. Um, but when I I must have taken taken a hard drive out of this because I say no hard drive, no memory. And that was in 2009, so I must have used it for parts. 
I have a Power Mac uh, 7290, uh, Performa 635 CD, uh, another Power Mac 7290, and a Sentra 650. I'm probably going to have to redo the caps on this one. That's probably the oldest one here. Um, probably actually going to bring that inside. Maybe we'll do a recapping on that um, in a little bit. But uh, a tiny cowboy hat. What do you look like? <laughs> oh, yes. This is an antenna topper uh, for uh, from uh, one of the Disney parks. It says Indiana Jones on it. So they had a little uh, a ride or something there. And this was a little, uh, little antenna topper, which has seen better days, unfortunately. But yeah, tiny cowboy hat. Uh, what else we got? We got oh, this is this was pretty cool back in the day. This is one of those little uh, iCade uh, Bluetooth adapters. So it basically allows you to play some games using little control stick, joystick type things. Uh, it's bad as flimsy as it looks here. The iCade Junior is what this one is. Uh, has no physical connection. There is a nice little spot through the bottom so you can plug in like your charging cable through here and just sit your phone on there. It's a neat little thing. Oh. Found an iCade for original iPad. I have an iCade for the original iPad. <laughs> I, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. It's a big old thing. Where did I put that? I don't know. It's probably, it's probably like somewhere else in this garage. But look, if you're going to use it, buy it. If you don't if you have no reason to use it. Those things were clearance like one like a month after they came out. So I'm not gonna like consider they're rare or anything like that. Um Yeah, that's that's a bunch of power max here. Uh what we got below here is probably uh, a little more interesting. So let's lower the camera a little bit. Yeah, I mean look Jay makes a good point there. Obviously, it's fun to collect things and such like that, but if you're not going to use it, I would not personally buy anything that I'm not going to use. Uh, if I'm going to use something in a video or something, I'll buy it, but if you're just, you know, if it's just for the sake of buying it, it's probably best off to uh, put that towards something else you're going to use. You know, five bucks here, ten bucks here, that adds up. So, just my two cents. All right, so what we got here is a stack of Pioneer LaserDisc players. These are industrial model laser disc players. These are LDV 8000 series. These are quite desirable uh, laser disc players because um, a lot of these actually were used in arcades or uh, versions of these were used in arcade cabinets uh, to run games that were uh, you know, run off of laser discs here. So yeah, lots of uh, laser disc players here. Uh, these two have problems. This one plays with a fuzzy picture and in black and white. Uh, this one, bad play button or bad IR connector. So the play button's broken off here. Uh, and I could not get this to function from a remote. There is a third one. Where the heck is it? Oh, hang on. there's a third one. Third one's over here. And uh, this one reads, uh, no power, maybe a bad fuse. So three laser disc players. Uh, I paid, I think it was $50 or $60 for three of them. And honestly, I regretted purchasing them as soon as I got it. The guy who I had to drive like quite a way up north to get it. And the guy's car was full of fast food wrappers and garbage. He smelt of cigarette smoke. And the whole car reeked. These players reeked. Like you could just tell they were just sitting in his house for a long time. And yeah, the second I got them, I'm like, oh, this is a bad deal. And I honestly haven't touched them much since. They're very heavy. They all have problems, um, but uh, the parts may be useful to either me or somebody else down the road. Uh, thankfully, I do have an industrial laser disc player with a working data port, and that was the reason why I got these. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to have a laser disc player I could control via a computer because I have a laser disc that sort of d is designed to do that. So um, I can actually get that to work with one of the players I have downstairs which is always like to the left of my uh, setup downstairs. So yeah, that's the story behind these players. Um, there's a, an Apple 15 inch LCD here. This has seen much better days. Uh, it's very yellowed, the plastic. Looks like something might have sprayed uh, liquid in there at one point. 
not in the best condition, uh, but I don't want to toss it, so it's sitting around in here. Uh, what do we got? Uh, another laser disc player. This is a realistic one. I don't think that one works. Uh, that's why it's here. I don't, I don't think I think it comes up with an error when I turn it on. Um, this is just a box of CDs. We have a looks like an Apple CD drive. Yes, it's an Apple. Uh, what model is this? Six hundred I. Let me put the camera back on the tripod here. Okay, Jay. We will look at that. Thank you, sir. I know if I don't know if the screen's good on it. Oh, this unfortunately has has one of those edge connectors for the the uh, Performa series, and I bet that yeah, that's cracked. That should be sticking out. Yeah, if those metal connectors weren't there, this thing would have snapped right off. And of course, I bend it back. That plastic's going to come right off. But this is just a little audio connector. Not really essential here, but that's a shame. But uh, I bought this from uh, the Trenton Computer Festival years and years ago, and uh, this was $3. So $3 for an Apple SCSI CD-ROM drive at that point in time was a pretty good deal. It has a sled on it. Um, August 1995 is the uh, firmware date on here. And uh, this was in... Uh, sold by a company called Lifetime Computers in Manville, New Jersey. Unfortunately, probably not around anymore. But, uh, hey, Bruce, if you're still around, is it just the 300 series that needs the caps replaced, or is it the 600 too? I'm not looking forward to those. I can tell you that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's not a not a bad find. Good to have a, a spare CD-ROM drive. Let's put that back on the shelf here. Oop, that little plastic piece fell off, but it's right under it, so... I know where to find it if I need it. And uh, lastly, we're going to see if we can just get the camera and point it down here. Just the, the caddy ones, Bruce? Or I saw your comment, you deleted it. I'll let you type. <laughs> just the caddy ones. Oh, okay. That's a relief. <laughs> that's, that's a very well-deserved relief. Okay, so... Here we are at the bottom shelf. I'm so scared right now, guys. Uh, this is the bottom shelf here. Uh, these are mostly cases with parts. <laughs> or parts of cases, basically. Uh, we have two G3 blue and white machines. Uh, you can see these are pretty much stripped for parts. I think the speakers still work on them. I don't think they have any boards. Um, uh, oh, so the, the Caddy, uh, I think 300, and maybe maybe it was only the 300 series. The Apple CD-ROM Caddy series, unfortunately, the uh, caps need to be replaced in them. So uh, Bruce did a video on those, I believe, or a live stream. But, uh, yeah, so we have uh, two Power Macs here. I believe this is a 6400, 6500. I forget the exact model of it. The faceplate uh, has been taken off. I have it somewhere. Um, I think I took everything out of this machine because... Uh, I bought this essentially for the video card that was in it. It had an AV capture card, and I basically stripped it. This was probably 15 years ago. Um, yeah, and I think unfortunately these have cracked handles in the back, so only uh, only one set of handles is good there. But I see this one actually has some cables in it. This might actually have a, a motherboard on it. Let me uh, let's put the camera back on the tripod. I'm, I'm curious enough. To pull that out, let's see. I don't know if I have enough room here, but oh boy, yeah, this this is a heavy one. This one I think I got at the Trenton Computer Festival years ago. This this says I wrote on here parts. Well, you can't see it because I'm not pointing the camera there. There we go, parts. Uh, there are much more worthier causes than buying me a fast computer, although the, the thought of that is flattering. <laughs> but yeah, this is a G3 tower. Let's open this up. Oh, we do have a board here. The heat sink has fallen off for some reason. Um, wait a second. This was just hanging around. I don't know if this fit on there, but uh, yeah, the heat sink fell off of there. Uh, we have no memory. 
no video cards. Uh, we don't have. Uh, we do have a power supply, so that's uh, that is good, I guess. Uh, let's see if this is one of the ones with the uh, bad IDE chip. That might be uh, why this is labeled parts, because if uh, it had that bad uh, IDE controller on it, uh, as some of the early ones did, uh, you would run into problems. So this is 646U2402 Ultra ATA. Let me look that up really quick. I don't remember which one it is. Which is the bad chip to have, which is the good chip to have. So, 646U2. Let's see. Sorry, just searching for this real quick. 646U2. Okay, so, yep, that's a revision one. Or maybe. Uh, no, this ends with 402. Okay, so this is, this is a revision two one. Okay, so this shouldn't be problematic. But uh, where'd I put that little piece of metal here? I don't know if this, uh, this fits that uh, CPU tray uh, little thing there. Actually, it looks like it does. Let's try and put that back on. Yeah, that needs to be bent back into shape, but... All right, well, at least we know this one is going to fall off. But at least we know this one has actually a lot of parts inside. Let's uh, look at the back. Uh, this is a 450 megahertz G3 tower, 128 megabytes of memory is what it came with. Came with a 9 gig ultra wide SCSI uh, adapter and a CD ROM drive. So, I'm going to take a picture of the serial number for you, Jay. Ah, and, ow! That plastic is sharp. Alright, let's, while we, have, while we have this one out, I think this is the one with the broken handles. Or at least one broken handle. Yeah, that's that poor handle. You can see it's cracked right here. Pretty nasty too. But uh, there is a serial number on here. I will take a picture of that just for you, Jay. There we go. And this also was a 450 megahertz model, but it came with a DVD RAM drive and a zip drive and a RAGE 128. That must have cost a pretty penny. Oh boy. Well, at least I know if I need any case parts. Besides the handles, I think I'm covered. So, oh boy, yes. See me try to get up without hurting myself. All right, so it's getting pretty dark out. I'm gonna start wrapping this up, I guess, because we went through the majority of what's on these shelves. And, sorry, just moving this so I can sit down. I don't see too much else that I could share with you right now. There's some other stuff scattered around in the garage here, but um, yeah, I don't have uh, much else to show you at the moment, but this is basically the rest of the machines that are hiding out in my garage. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Zip was going to take over floppies. I Omega sure hope so. Um, they were just, yeah, it was a popular format, especially with graphic designers. So a lot of uh, individuals liked using them. So, <laughs> hey Ricardo, sorry about that. Bad luck. Sorry, but uh, we have been going on here for just about two hours, and so 
Uh, I usually like to keep streams relatively short when I can. Uh, <laughs> but you can rewind and watch uh, the stream. That's the good thing about it. You can watch from the beginning. Ah, uh, oh, the jazz drives. Yes, um, I have a few of those. I have some discs I have to get data off of. I have some SideQuest discs too. But uh, anybody have any questions or anything before we wrap up here? I think we, we looked at um, the majority of the stuff I have here. Uh, there's some, I think there are just some more. It's a, another. Oh, th there's some keyboards up here. As, as you guys ask any final questions or anything. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jay. Um, we got some keyboards I missed. Let's see if there's anything good. I see a good one already. Oh, this one needs some love. This is a. Uh, I think. Uh, I think uh, something must have happened to this one. It's missing a, a key there right in the center, but maybe this escape key is a good, <laughs> a good uh, donor for the other one that we had. Thank you, Dana. Is the section computer section of your garage, or there's another side? Uh, no, this is there's another side, but that's all bins and unrelated stuff. Um, there's like an IMAX box. There's an Adam ColecoVision box, just the box. And there's an arcade cabinet I'm restoring on the other side, but uh, that's this is where most of the, the junk is. Um, yeah, so let's see if uh, yeah, these are the keyboards. I just want to look through. We have uh, oh, this is a Micro Warehouse Incorporated knockoff keyboard. This is not it's not an Apple key. Ooh, you hear that? That's a that's a clicky keyboard. This is not an Apple one. This is a uh, Micro Warehouse Incorporated, so Mac Warehouse or PC Warehouse. Uh, Power User 105, personal computer and ex intended keyboard. It's supposed to say extended, maybe, but it's E N T E N D E D. Model power user 105. Yeah, so this is this is just a third-party keyboard. Maybe they sold around the time of the Mac clones. Not 100% sure, but this is has the little pegs here for the same overlay of uh, one of these guys. Let me see if I get that out. Or do I have another one right there? No, I don't. So here's the Apple Extended Keyboard 2. And here's this, identical footprint. Look extremely similar to each other, and that's by design. This one down here is the knockoff one. And even the little pegs there to hold those little overlays are right there. Yeah, I have a few of those overlays still. I think I still have uh, one for Cork Express somewhere. But uh, yeah, click on Bruce's uh, link there if you're interested in uh, <laughs> Looking at the nasty stuff that uh, can be uh, inside of those CD-ROMs. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here's the Apple original one, and here is the clone one. Very, very similar keyboard layout. So, yeah, I have, uh, I'm lucky enough to have two Mac clones. I'm working on a video of it. If Broody was here, he'd uh, yell at me that it's not done yet. Probably isn't going to yell at me, he's probably driving. Hopefully he's not typing while he's driving. But I'm working on that. That's something I'm trying to get finished. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff I want to share about that. But uh, let's see. There's three more keyboards here, or at least two and a half, because we have part of an Apple adjustable keyboard. <laughs> Just part. This is the number pad part and the function key part. I always thought this was so weird because these keys was so tiny. Maybe there were overlays or something. I don't know. I always found that a little odd. But yes, yeah, so this is this is half of the Apple adjustable keyboard. I have the other half indoors, so I'll probably bring that inside. And uh, we have it looks like two Apple design keyboards here. Yeah, these are like the ones I showed before. Very popular with the uh, Performa series. Ooh, the metal started rusting. That stinks. I hope you were able to fix that, or at least save the parts out of it. Now, these aren't terribly bad. They're, they're just mushy. They're budgets. They're not the, the best keyboard. Um, 
you had no keyboard. It's uh, better than nothing, I guess. Oh, you had to chuck it. No! <laughs> ah, don't worry. We all have regrets. I gave away a Mac Plus and a Mac SE for like a dollar because I didn't know what was wrong with it. That's over 20 years ago, and I still regret it. And we had two Apple ADV cables lying around. That ring goes indoors, too. But And we're out of focus again. Thank you, Mr. Logitech Camera. I'm so happy that you are making us out of focus. But... Yeah, I think, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, yeah, and there's just two other VCRs on the shelf there. I think that's it. I think we looked at everything. <coughs> ah, all this dust I'm mixing up here is not good. Um, yeah, any questions or anything? Um, uh, buying any new Apple products soon? No, I think the latest thing I bought was my Apple Watch, and that was like 2018. <laughs> <laughs> so no no plans on anything anything new at least the adjustable keyboard is such a weird little thing yes it is it is very strange i actually have one in the box i want to unbox at one of these points it is a very neat little keyboard but uh yeah i know there's only a few of you left here but i'll give you a few minutes anybody has any questions they want to ask anything like that uh, feel free to like the video uh, i'm assuming all of you who are watching are a subscriber if you're not a subscriber please click that little subscribe button You'll be informed when I go live or do another video or anything like that. <laughs> Rough guess of metric tons. Does that mean it has to be more than one? Because it might be one ton of stuff. I don't know about more than that. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to, you know, I have a list of computers I have. We'll have to, we'll have to, if someone could go ahead and help me add the weight to those, then we can answer Jay's question. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I can always rely on you for those questions. But All right, if there's no other questions there, I'm going to wrap this up. It's uh, uh, been a pleasure to look through some of the stuff. I didn't do so much cleaning as I did rummaging around and just remembering what I had. Uh, but it was fun to see. I, I did not know I had that uh, knockoff uh, uh, micro warehouse keyboard, so we'll have to play around with that. I'll have to bring some of these magazines inside. And uh, look at that. You know, just looking over here. Sony CD Mavica 3.2 megahertz pixel Mavica camera based on CDRs. How about that? See, I wasn't even looking for this thing and just uh, hanging out. Look at that. Records right on mini CDRs. How about that? Uh, what is the average velocity? <laughs> oh, that's a very good question, Dana. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Were they carrying coconuts? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. I, I hope I was entertaining. Uh, but yeah, so that's about it for the stream, I guess. Uh, unless I find more crap as I go along here. But no, let's end it here. <laughs> I'll be here forever. Uh, there's diminishing light, and uh, and only only the comments are here to keep me company. But <laughs> it could grip it by the husk. Oh, boy. Well, thank you guys for keeping me company, and thank you for the... Uh, the attempt to look through some of the stuff in my garage. At least I have a better understanding of what is here. And if I forget, I can always just rewatch this video. So uh, again, if uh, apologies for some of the, the uh, crummy audio and the late start. Um, I was originally planning to, to stream this from my phone, but apparently YouTube doesn't allow you to start and set up a stream on your desktop and then do it from the phone. But uh, all right, uh, we'll do something fun again in the next couple of days. Um, yes, as Jay says, please like and subscribe or else. No, that's uh, very, very kind of you guys. And uh, see you later. So take care, guys. Um, and uh, I guess I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good night.